This is a video I've been wanting to make for the longest time. Ever since I started a YouTube channel, I knew I was gonna make a video about this anamorphic adapter. With the increase in popularity regarding anamorphic lenses and people looking for the anamorphic look, there have been a ton of anamorphic budget options, whether it be adapters or lenses. I've tried almost every single budget option. This is because a year and a half ago, I found the missing component to the look that I've been searching for for the longest time. It even goes before I started filmmaking. When I was a kid, I would watch movies and I would wonder why it looks so cool or I don't know what cinematic meant but why it had a certain look and then when I started shooting video I would want to recreate the same look that I found in movies and I would get close I fiddled around with color grading and composition and focal lengths and all of that but for some reason I was never able to nail the look that I had in my head until about a year and a half ago when I read this article discussing the difference between anamorphic and spherical lenses it clicked in my head that the look I've been searching for had to do with anamorphic lenses. I thought they just had flares and all of that. I was pretty naive to the topic, but when I found that out, I went on this deep dive rabbit hole of a search for the anamorphic lens that would give me the look I wanted. And there were a couple times where it got close and it had one characteristic, but not the other. And then it had this other compromise and some of the budget anamorphic lenses don't even look like anamorphic footage, honestly. They were good and easy to use, but they just didn't give me the look. So then I went into Vintage DIY Solutions, which is anamorphic projection lenses that do give you that classic vintage anamorphic look. I would have to completely rig up my camera to use these different DIY solutions and it gave me the look, but I ended up not using it because it was such a hassle to use. So I completely ditched that and ended up with this anamorphic adapter, which is the Avascope 1.5 times amber flare anamorphic adapter. That's a mouthful. And I chose this adapter because it gave me everything I was looking for with the least amount of compromises as possible. And the little kid, Anthony, that has watched movies and loved the look and didn't even know why it looks so cool is like giddy when it comes to using this adapter. So the footage that you're seeing right now is actually shot with the Avascope paired with the contact size 50 mil. And my side angle is a spherical lens that's at 50 mil as well. I wanted you guys to see the differences when I cut between the two. It's not just flares or cinematic black bars or whatever. But anyways, let's let's keep going. The footage you're about to see was solely shot with the Avascope adapter and a contact Zeiss 50 mil vintage lens. I wanted to make a whole compilation of different footage I shot over the past couple months, but I didn't really have the time and I wanted to get this video out as soon as possible. So enjoy the footage and I'll see you when it's done. We're about to do the ribbon cutting ceremony. Couldn't be any more excited that everybody's here. Our, our loved ones are here, our friends, our families. We're just so grateful for everyone here doing it with us. So we're excited. I feel just like I should, this that new me. I ain't really tripping if you hate it, you consume me. Moving so smooth, so easy like a layup. Riding on the way, far down, keep my head up. Cause that's life. All this can't be bought for no price. Go and hit them brand new heights, take my shot like Mike. I can't win them all, but I'll try. Don't got answers, but that's all right. Yeah. Before my mom was it's crazy our journey from a little rinky dink Kissimmee. That video you just saw was of a grand opening of a local salon. I did not know how the footage was going to come out shooting that with a anamorphic lens, but I spoke with the client. They were okay with it, and I thought it came out pretty good. After trying all the different solutions out there, the Avascope is the best anamorphic adapter if you are looking for the true anamorphic look and you are not wanting to rig out your camera and have a very clunky, weird, finicky setup that probably won't work on a professional set. And I'm not gonna make a bold statement like that without backing it up. So here are a couple reasons why I purchased the Avascope and I believe it's the best anamorphic solution. So the first reason and probably the most important one is that it had the look. Let me explain. There are a couple key characteristics that come with the anamorphic look that to some people are imperfections, one of those being distortion. That might sound weird to some of the viewers if you only shot with spherical lenses, but a key component to the anamorphic look is this barrel distortion that almost looks like a fisheye, but is tasteful in a way. It's not distracting and it really attracts the viewer's eye to the subject or the center of the frame. You'll see this in a ton of movies. So something with spherical lenses is they correct this most of the time. It doesn't matter which lens you buy today, most spherical lenses are trying to be perfect. 
which is completely fine. I love a perfect lens. I love a lens that doesn't have distortion, pin cushion, all these different things. But when you're shooting with anamorphic lenses, most of the time, if you want the traditional look, it does have that barrel distortion and the Avascope adapter has it tastefully. Another key characteristic that the Avascope does really well is it has subdued flares. This is gonna be a pain point for a lot of people, but a lot of the anamorphic budget options have these prominent, extremely saturated flares that in my opinion, just don't look good. I really don't wanna spend $1,000, $1,500 on a lens and then get it for it to look like it just has an anamorphic filter on the front that's super distracting. One thing that differentiates the Avascope from budget options is there's texture in the flares. Let me explain. It doesn't look like a streak filter. Most expensive anamorphic lenses, you can actually see the separated ovals within the flare. It doesn't look like a singular streak. It has this layered flare depicting the oval elements within the anamorphic adapter or lens or whatever. And the Avascope does this really well. It has that textured flare. It might not look like an Atlas or a Cook anamorphic lens exactly, but to me, it looks miles and miles better than any budget option out there. Yes, some companies are doing it better and they are subduing their flares, but they're still missing that layered textured flare that I really enjoyed when watching anamorphic footage. One characteristic that the Avascope does really well, and it's my favorite part that I couldn't find any other lens do well, is the oval bokeh. All of these different characteristics combined with the painterly oval background that you'll get with the Avascope completes the anamorphic look. There's one budget option that does the oval bokeh and the painterly waterfall background really well, and that is the Great Joy, but that's a 1.8 times stretch, which doesn't work with most sensors really well. And the Avascope's a 1.5 times stretch that looks like a 1.8 or a two times stretch. I know some people won't agree with me, but to me, it has this exaggerated anamorphic look without having the insane amount of stretch that doesn't work with most sensors. And that's why I bought the Avascope over other solutions. It has the look. It has the elongated bokeh, the waterfall kind of painterly looking background. It has the subdued textured flares that I really enjoy. It has the distortion that most lenses correct, but the Avascope just did all those things really, really well. And just a side note, when it comes to the look, it's actually really sharp. And I'm actually shooting this at F2, and to me it looks pretty sharp, but most anamorphic lenses that can cover full frame anything are usually T2.9, or even adapters you have to shoot at F4 or F5.6. All that that I just shared was only one part of the reason why I bought it. This may sound like I'm trying to sell you something. I'm actually not making any money from this video. I'm just super passionate about this solution. The second reason why I believe this is the best solution is the build quality. It is built like an absolute tank. To be fair, most anamorphic lenses today are built like tanks, but I'm comparing it to DIY solutions that actually gave me the look I was looking for because the budget lenses just didn't do it for me. But I never really used them because they weren't easy to use. The Avascope solves this problem. It is a single focus solution, meaning you just set your taking lens to infinity, and then you just focus with the front focus ring on the Avascope that is super smooth. DIY solutions, on the other hand, you need a variable diopter on the front that weighs about 700 grams, which is the weight of the Avascope that you attach to your anamorphic scope that may need a housing or you need a Frankenstein rig it. And at that point, you have this big bulky thing just to get the anamorphic look and the Avascope just has it right off the bat and super easy to use. There are two ways you can mount the Avascope. You can attach it directly to your lens and use it that way. Most people are scared to do this for some reason, but I don't understand it. There are much heavier lenses that we don't use with supports, but I don't know, I guess people in the cinema realm <laughs> like to either believe myths or whatnot. It's almost like my Hispanic grandma telling me not to open the fridge when I first wake up or else I'll die. And that's just ridiculous. But that's how I see a lot of cinema people saying, no, you can't do this or you can't do that. But you can attach it directly to your lens and you'll be completely fine. The second way to attach it, which takes more rigging, but is much more convenient if you want to swap out lenses, is you attach it on rails. You can just slide the adapter to the front, swap out your lens, slide it to the back, then you're good to go and keep shooting. With the other solution, you'd have to unscrew it 
screw on the adapter and do this whole different thing. The build quality and ease of use of the Aviscope adapter was the perfect middle ground for me when it came to DIY solutions and budget anamorphic lenses. And now for the last reason why I believe the Aviscope is the best value for money is the cost. The Aviscope costs $2,400. And before you go in the comments section and get super angry and you watch this whole video up until now and you're like, oh, I thought it was budget. Let me explain. To get a really good quality looking anamorphic lens, you would have to spend upwards of $8,000 to $30,000. I know there are budget options for $700. I know there are budget options for $1,300, some for $1,800. The $700 options to me look like cheap spherical lenses trying to be anamorphic. The mid-tier $1,200, $1,300, are starting to get there and then some of the $1,800 ones like the Great Joy and whatnot do have that look but with a bunch of different compromises. The reason why I believe this $2,400 adapter is worth it is because I essentially get three to four good looking anamorphic lenses for the price of $2,400. You may say, Anthony, that's a little bit more work, blah, blah, blah. Then you have to factor in the price of a taking lens but these vintage lenses really aren't that expensive and they look great anyways. I simply have to slide my rails and just change my lens and I have a completely different focal length. Then you may argue and say, Anthony, well, they have the Moment anamorphic adapter and that one's only, I don't know, $800 or something. But one thing I wanna make really clear is that $800 adapter, ironically, looks like the $800 lenses. That's just my opinion. So you're paying $800 to get anamorphic footage that looks like $800 lenses. With the Avis scope, you're getting footage that looks more like the Atlas Mercury's, which are $5,000 a lens. It's kind of a trade-off. You get the cheaper adapter and it'll look like the cheaper anamorphic lenses. You get this adapter and it looks more like premium anamorphic lenses that cost way, way more. At least that's how I justified buying this adapter. It gives me multiple different focal lengths that look like a premium high cost anamorphic lens as opposed to a cheap budget option. I'm really rushing through these reasons and I wish I could have spent more time organizing and getting my points just where I wanted them to be when making this video. But like I said, I didn't really have all the time. So just gonna have to rummage through. And if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments section if there's something you didn't understand. So before I get into the cons about the Aviscope adapter, these videos do take a lot of work. It might not seem like it, but I spend hours and hours and days and days making them. So if you enjoyed this content, consider subscribing, like the video so YouTube can push it out to other people. And yeah, tell me what you think. If you don't like it, also tell me what you think. I do like constructive criticism as well as the haters out there just really help the algorithm as well. So let's get into the dislikes. Following the trend about cost, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like $2,400 isn't a lot of money. It is a lot of money, I'm not rich. I don't have all the money in the world, so $2,400 is a big pill to swallow. I do see why it costs $2,400. The footage coming out of this lens looks like it costs a lot more than $2,400, but that cost is not an easy pill to swallow. Another con that it could be user error, and there actually is a workaround for this, is when I use this adapter with a focus motor, it actually completely shifted the lens. I don't know if the focus motor was too strong or whatnot, but when I hit the hard stop of close focusing, it actually shifted the anamorphic lens completely. It's being held on by this grip system and the grip isn't tight enough to combat the power of a focus motor. So my workaround for this is you can manually put hard stops on most focus motors and I would just do that instead of letting the motor just smack each side because then you will have your, your image shifting and it'll get really annoying. So this next con is similar to the Hispanic grandma cinema old school stuck in their ways kind of thing. There's a term in the cinema realm, LWS, it represents the standard height from a rail system to your lens. I really wish the Aviscope came with an adjustable rail system so I didn't have to have an LWS base plate. Like for example, the S5 II doesn't have LWS for it yet since it's a newer camera. And if I wanna use a rail system, it's not a big deal. I can rig it out in a certain way. I just wish they would have an adjustable one instead of being like, LWS is the standard, get a base plate, spend a thousand dollars. I just think it's a little ridiculous. This next point's a little nitpicky. The Aviscope comes with two caps, a front cap and a rear cap, and they are both solid metal and screw on instead of like snapping on or being magnetic or, or just something easier. So whenever I wanna use the Aviscope, I have to just keep turning it. I don't know why they couldn't just put like one of those cine caps that just like slide onto the front. 
but that's super small and it's not a big deal. I could get an aftermarket cap for the Avascope anyways. So that's pretty much it. But to sum it all up, the Avascope is the best budget anamorphic solution in my opinion, because it actually has the anamorphic look without all the compromises. It has amazing build quality while still being really easy to use. And the cost in relation to value that you get is incredible. It was definitely a lot more work shooting this video with the anamorphic adapter. And I'm really sad I'm gonna be shooting the rest of my videos with spherical again, but I need autofocus and I move way, way too much to shoot with an anamorphic lens for every video. But this one was really fun and I'll see you in the next one.